Hey everybody, Longo here, and in this video we are going to cover ellipses. Um, hang tight, this one might take a little longer than usual because of the things we need to discuss, um, but don't worry, we're good. Standard form of an ellipse. So, ellipses have a main standard form, and that would be this first one. Just so you guys know, A and B are interchangeable, we'll talk about why in a minute. Um, but when you're working with ellipses, you're going to get everything equal to 1. So in a circle, everything was equal to a radius squared. Um, in ellipses, everything's going to be equal to 1 uh, for a very good reason, and you'll see as we move on. A and B are going to represent your kind of like your radius in an x direction and then a radius in a y direction. Um, the A and B are interchangeable because there's a formula that uses both and you're going to use your bigger one for A. Um, but to be honest, it really doesn't matter. Every once in a while I've seen the equation written this way. So you just write the entire thing in parentheses and square everything. And honestly, for me, it's not going to matter one way or the other. I just want you to be familiar with both in case it comes up on a standardized test or something. All right. So anyway, jump in. Similar to a circle, we have our x minus h and our y minus k, where our center is still h and k. Our denominator, a and b are going to be your distance to the vertices and the distance to the co-vertices of an ellipse. So, again, it's kind of like the radius in an x direction and a radius in a y direction. So let's look at the parts of an ellipse. An ellipse is basically just a circle that's been stretched, either vertically or horizontally. The vertices is on your major axis. That's the stretchier side, the part that's been pulled. So it's almost like a diameter, but we know in a circle diameters are all the same and radii are all the same. That's why we're not using those terms, but it's just to help you understand. Um, so if you go from one end of an ellipse to the other end in the longer direction, that's your major axis, and those are your vertices. So if you go to the shorter direction, those are known as your co-vertices and your minor axis. And then we have these little purple dots. The purple dots are known as your foci. One is called a focus. And those are just little points on the circle where if you bounce off of one anywhere on the ellipse, it will hit the other foci or the other focus. So if you shot something like this, it would bounce off of it and it would always go to the other focus. And to find those points, the formula is going to be c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. Again, that's why we make a bigger. So when we subtract, we don't have a negative. Okay. So, those are the basic parts and some of our little pieces that we need to know. So, the general form is going to look quite a bit different than a circle for two major parts. So, remember, um, in a circle, we had our, a squared, or our x squared plus y squared, both positive, almost always x squared and y squared, but occasionally it could be 2x squared and 2y squared. How you know that you are working with an ellipse is if you have two positive x squared, y squared variables, but they have different coefficients in front. As you can see, we have a 25x squared and a 9y squared. So again, if they are both positive but have different numbers in front, that is an ellipse. Now... To put it into our standard form or our graphing form, it's going to be all about completing the square again. So just like in a circle, we're going to put our x's together, so our 25x squared minus 200x. We are going to put our y's together, so we have our plus 9y squared plus 54y. And we are going to put our number on the other side, so that's going to be equal to a negative 256. This is supposed to be 256, everybody. Um, sorry about the typo. And now, old school completing the square rules. When you are working with something with a variable in front, you have to factor it out. 
not a variable, coefficient in front. 25. Now we have x squared minus 8x, and we have our little space. Factor out our 9. So we have our 9, then our y squared plus 6y, little bit of space, and then our equals negative 256. Next part. Half of 8 is 4 squared is 16, so you add 16, but remember from way back in the day when you are completing the square with a number in front, you have to multiply 25 times 16, which is going to add 400 to the other side. 9 is what's going to be multiplied to this line. That is half of 6, which is 3. Squared is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. And now we are going to put this together. So we have 25. And then we have x minus half of b, which is 4 squared. Now we go to our y plus 9 parentheses. y half of b is plus 3 squared. And that is equal to a grand total of 220. And from there, we have to get to the part where it's equal to 1. So when we're equal to 1, that means that we have to divide everything by 225. And now what we do is we reduce this fraction over here, and that's going to give us x minus 4 squared over 9 plus our y plus 3 over 9 to 25 reduces to 25 and now we are equal to 1 okay and your a and b remember they're interchangeable but your a and b are 5 and 3 um, and a for now is going to be bigger because that's what's this number squared so we have 5 and 3. So again, I've also seen these written like this, where you would take the parentheses and make it further, and you would have your x minus 4 over 3, and then you would have your y plus 3 over 5 squared equals 1. So now you don't have to really think about which one those is. Again, for me, doesn't matter which order. Do it, whatever you want. So how do we find C? So the formula for C, as mentioned above, is C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. So C squared is equal to 25 minus 9. So C squared is equal to 16. So C is equal to 4. Now what C represents is how far away from the center your foci are. Okay? So, let's put this together now. We have a center at um, 4, negative 3. So we have our center at 4, negative 3, opposite of our h and k. 4, negative 3, plot your center. Underneath the x is your x radius or your distance to your covertices in this case because it's smaller. Um, so you are going to go three units to the right and three units to the left. And then your distance to your vertices is your a value, which is under the y. So that's five up and five down. And this is what your ellipse looks like. The last part, though, is you have to graph your foci. Now, to do that, you have to think of what value changed. Was it your x value or was it your y value? Well, because this is being stretched up and down, your foci are always inside of the stretched direction of your ellipse. So, we just found that our distance is 4. We are changing the y value. So your foci are going to be your x-coordinate of the center, which is 4, 
comma, since we're changing the y value, it's negative 3 plus or minus 4, your c value. So your two foci are going to be at 4, comma, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, and 4, comma, negative 3 minus 4 is a negative 7. And all we're going to do is put a dot on each one of those. Actually, my negative 7 is there. Boom. And we've got it. Okay? So that is how you graph an ellipse. Um, with all the work. And like I said, there was a lot to talk about today. Um, but I have one more example for you. And this is already in graphing form. All you have to do is try graphing this part and, yeah, give it a shot. And when you're ready, click play. I'll show you the answer, and we're good to go. Okay, so for this one, because it was in graphing form, your center is negative 2, 5. Your A value is going to be 4. Your B value is 2. Your C value is going to be 4 squared minus 2 squared, which is... 12, the square root of that is 3.46, so basically it's 3.5. So now you go get your setup. Negative 2, 5, boom. Um, your radius in the x direction is 4 units to the right and 4 units to the left. Your radius in the y direction is 2, so we go 2 up and 2 down, and this is what our ellipse looks like. So because this is being stretched in the x direction, left and right, our foci are going to be our x-coordinate of the center, so negative 2, plus or minus 3.46, comma 5, because again, we are stretching the x direction. So that means our foci are going to be um, 1.46,5 and a negative 5.46,5. And we would just go to approximately that location, put our foci, and we're good to go. So see, once it's in graphing form, it doesn't take a while to do. But when you are in a general form that you need to put into the graphing form, that's where a lot of your work takes place. All right, everybody, that's working with ellipses. This is Longo, and I'm out. See you, bye.